Greetings, traveler. I am Sun Nox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear some? This one is called DM Can't Handle a Gay Character. Oh, how shocking. I recently told this story to my game group, and it made me realize I should probably put it here too. Not a super long story, but funny and sad. This guy was running an exalted game. For those that don't know, you play mythic demigods in an ancient world. It should be noted that this GM, as a player, frequently found excuses to play female characters, and they were always, well, exactly the stereotype you're imagining. Not relevant to this story, but amusing as background for what follows. I decided to play a gay character. It wasn't super relevant most of the time, since the game was heavy combat slash adventure and light on RP, but I thought it would add fun background to my character. Basically, he was nobility who wasn't interested in siring a bunch of heirs and continuing his family dynasty due to his sexual preferences, so he'd been kicked out into a life of adventure. Unless it came up, you probably wouldn't realize he was gay, since I wasn't doing any sort of cartoony stereotypes or anything. At one point, we encountered some sort of fey illusion master, and part of this NPC's initial attempts to flatter, seduce, manipulate us was to create a whole harem of illusionary, super hot women to act like honeypots. The GM asked us to make some sort of role to resist these efforts, and I asked if it was a magical mind-affecting thing or just regular. If high-powered seduction. He said it didn't matter, so I asked if I should roll at all. I figured maybe this was a neat way to get an advantage over the NPC, making him think he'd gotten the better of all of us while I was actually unaffected. I'd pretend to be seduced in game of course, but I'd have the advantage of not actually being distracted. The GM clearly didn't remember this aspect of my character, or maybe never read my backstory to begin with, because he asked for an explanation. I said, well, this NPC might not know this unless he's been spying on us for a while, or can read minds or whatever, but my character isn't attracted to any of these illusions. He's gay. What I genuinely expected was just for the GM to retcon a little and say the Fae had conjured both male and female illusions. After all, they were magical creations anyway. There was no reason he couldn't have brought attractive men into existence to specifically distract my character as well. Instead, the GM lost his shit. The same guy threw a tantrum about players playing characters who didn't share their own sexual preferences. He didn't outright say he couldn't handle a gay character, just that since I wasn't gay, I shouldn't play one. Of course, 100% of his female characters were lesbians. Duh. I objected to this on grounds that it was, you know, total bullshit and he just cancelled the whole game. Oh well, no great loss. It seems oddly inappropriate. <laughs> How would you get so upset over that? I mean, one, okay, obviously the DM overreacted, and you're not, you're not required to play what you are in real life. That's part of fantasy, right? <laughs> you're obviously, you're probably not a, an elf either. Ah, uh, but, you know, in real life, but you can play an elf. Isn't that crazy? Um, the thing I, the thing I don't understand though is I feel like charming effects that are used to lure you in and make you attracted or seduced or something against your will shouldn't be limited to, oh, well, if they weren't uh, of the sexual preference that I desire, then I can't be charmed. I mean, because you're being charmed against your will. So I think naturally, even if it's of the same sexual preference, the fact that they can charm you doesn't mean they were your type necessarily. You might not have been attracted to them otherwise. So the whole point of a charming effect, I don't think should be limited to, oh, well, I'm immune to it simply because I'm gay and they're of a, an attraction that I'm not normally attracted to. Although I guess I could see the problem with that in the game if somebody feels like they're being pushed into a direction that they aren't comfortable with outside of it. So I, I, you know what, now that I think about it, I guess I could see the problems with that. I'm actually curious, what do you think? Do you think that charming effects or any sort of seduction where the, you're, you're swayed against your will should consider your sexual preferences as a character? I actually, I don't know, I'm actually kind of torn now. Anyways, we have another tale. This one is called The Man-Child, The Yandere, and The Gay Elf. Okay. So this isn't so much a full-on story as it is just me telling you good people of a few incidents I've had in the last couple of years with a problem player that I'll call Andrew. Andrew has been, to put it bluntly, a total asshole. A little background, I'm part of a group that plays D&D 5th Edition usually once a week. We've temporarily made it every other week due to the increase of gas prices. We've done one full campaign and are currently in the middle of our second along with a short prologue campaign. And in all three, Andrew has been 
been in a pain in both the game and in real life. I am sorry, that was difficult to read. I'm sorry. I'm expecting commas somewhere. I'll start with the characters. She's made three so far, and two out of the three have been downright insufferable. The first one was a human cleric named Oni-chan. I wish I was making that up. Who he played as a stereotypical yandere threatening to kill the NPCs we met at most encounters we had. I, thankfully, she wasn't in the campaign long before she was curb stomped into a bloody pulp by a bearded devil. The character after was another cleric named Alexander, half human, half dragon. This was the least offensive character he played, but admittedly didn't have much of a memorable personality. On the other hand, this is we are, this is where, sorry, punctuation again, the out-of-game problems start showing their ugly faces. The first major one was toward the end of our time of the Frost Maiden campaign. Andrew had gotten the spell sheet for his cleric and wanted to type on his laptop, but Adrian, our DM, wanted him to write down on paper so he could look at to make sure he wasn't adding anything he shouldn't. Oh yeah, we had caught him cheating a few times before, and after this mainly by looking up monster stats on his laptop and changing his dice rolls. That's no fun. Andrew argued that he could just put them on his computer, but Adrian wanted them written. This set Andrew off as he started ranting at us, saying that he was targeting him and chewing him out, and then Rage quit the session before playing his Wii with the volume stupidly high while we're playing D&D. And then he tried to guilt us by stabbing himself with a fork and then throwing a pity party. It was just a mess. Wow! This... this guy sounds... terrible. That brings us to our current campaign in Watcher Deep. And his current character, who is the worst in my opinion, Loa Aran, the rainbow-haired, gay-as-all-can-be elf ranger. His exact description of her. Again, I wish I was making this up. Firstly, he tried flirting with the cleric of our party, being sniffing her hair. By sniffing her hair, I'm assuming is what you meant. Yes, it's as creepy as it sounds, and our cleric appropriately responded by cutting her finger. What a weirdo. Secondly, he's grown a horrible case of main character syndrome, firstly by claiming he knew all the farmers in the farmlands outside of Waterdeep until we called him out, saying that was unrealistic, to inserting himself in moments that he didn't need to, such as when my fighter was asked if she had seen a man who went missing and she had, as the man had been flirting with her a few nights before when Andrew shoved his nose into it, saying the man had also flirted with his lesbian elf, as well along with also interrupting an RP moment I was having with the monk in our party. That was a difficult read. This campaign is also the point where the out-of-game issues are at their worst. At one point, April, our original DM, had to take a few weeks to help with her sister's funeral and grieve in general, and told us she'd let us know when she was ready to play again, and we were fine with it and left her alone. I'm sorry for your loss. Except for Andrew, who just couldn't stop asking her when D&D was to the point of upsetting her. Wow, this guy seems to not be very skilled with social... He doesn't really seem to have social skills, I guess is what I'm looking for. The most recent problem happens a few weeks ago, long story short, too late. He had spoiled some of Pokemon Legends Arceus, and when I asked him to not spoil, I... I, he, proceeded to threaten to spoil the entire game and then tried to place all the blame on me. Admittedly, this made me snap and ban him from a campaign I have in the works, and I told him why and stated my issues with him and then muted him so I could cool down and not say anything I'd regret, until he proceeded to pull a tantrum and then ban me from his house, not thinking of the consequences, even with our D&D group and another group chat saying that he was being ridiculous, so being the bigger person, I unbanned him from my campaign. Sounds like a nightmare, actually. The next session, after that, we tried explaining to him why what we did was out of line. What he did, sorry, what he did was out of line. Particularly, my friend Cameron tried to explain to him why he was being a child about this, only for Andrew to constantly interrupt. And when Cameron did finish talking, Andrew said, and I quote, Okay, now, if you would let the adult explain, essentially just having been called a child by someone who has been throwing multiple temper tantrums, Cameron stepped out of the room to keep from decking him right in the face. Later that same session, he flung his dice after getting some bad rolls, nearly hitting Cameron in the face. This is the most recent incident, and I am 95% tempted to just ban him 
for my campaign, and the party agrees that I am in my right to do so. However, a few people have said that I should give one more chance. But I feel like we've given all him, we've given, we've all given him plenty of chance that he's squandered, so I'm at a bit of an impasse of what to do. What do you guys think? Sorry if this was a little longer than I should have been, but I just had to vent. Thanks for listening if you read all the way through. Update, just wanted to post an update. After talking it out with the group, we've decided not to play with Andrew again. We've told him that due to life reasons, we can no longer play with him. In reality, we'll just stop playing at a different... We'll just... Wait. We'll just be playing at a different location without his knowledge. Okay, yes, good. That's, that is what I think you should do. That guy... He sounds like a nightmare. And obviously, if, if, if everyone... Okay, so here's, here's, my, here's how I look at it. If I'm playing with people, and I'm the only one with an issue, and nobody else seems to mind, either that group is just screwed up, depending on the circumstances, or I'm in the wrong. But if the whole group has an issue with it, chances are, objectively, that person's an issue. So if the whole group doesn't want to play with this person, and he's a nuisance, and he's ruining the fun, then I think you do the right thing. Just don't play without him. Or play without him. That's what I meant. <laughs> Anyways. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, I think you do the right thing. Just move on and play campaigns without him. Problem solved! Hopefully. Anyways, that concludes all our tales for today. If you'd like to hear more, come back and I shall tell you some.